were enforcing. So I, I don't really understand the controversy because the first question we'll ask ourselves is, how, is the Nigerian police or the Inspector General of Police, has the Inspector General of Police or the Nigerian police officers acted in any way or traversed their past? So the I'm obvious saying, answer yes, is right. no. Because first of all, you ask yourself, is there a valid law prohibiting the use of tinted glasses in Nigeria? The answer is yes. Does that law empower Nigerian police officers to enforce it in the manner we are doing right now? The answer is yes. Does that law recognize the Inspector General of Police as the appropriate authority to issue tinted glass permit? The answer is yes. So I, there, there, there shouldn't be any controversy. And there again, is, Frank, we must because, look... Now, let, let me jump in there. The second part of the question where you say uh, the way the police are enforcing it, well, some think it is wrong about it because, yes, you cited the caveat where you also say, uh, provided it doesn't render the person in the vehicle obscure or invisible. Now, where something is wrong is that they're clamping down on all shades of tinted vehicles here, whether or not it renders it obscure, and they think there's a problem with that. Now, like, let, me, let, let me deal with that very quickly. Go ahead. Let me deal with that very quickly. If you, if you look at the law, first of all, you, you need to understand the philosophical, the, the philosophical basis for that law. That law is designed to promote what we call visual transparency. Visual transparency means that police officers who are on observatory patrol, for example, whether they're on foot patrol, whether they're on vehicular patrol, should be able, standing at a safe distance, they should be able to look into a vehicle and see clearly the persons and objects inside the vehicle. Now, when you tint your vehicle, the tendency is for you to say, this tint is light, and therefore it will not render me obscure or invisible. But the truth is that if you're a police officer or a law enforcement agent, and you are standing at a distance of, let's say, 10 meters or 5 meters away from the vehicle, you may discover that you will not be able to see the objects and persons in that vehicle clearly. And once the tint is such that it tampers on the, the, the visual transparency, then obviously it is infringing on the law. And for God's sake, if you think otherwise, it is for you to go to the court and argue your case when you are charged to court by the appropriate law enforcement agency. We'll, we'll come to so that I, part, I think Frank, but what, what are a couple of people have done, particularly uh, my friend Malaki, has been yes. to argue emotionally. And you see, when you, when you are faced with this kind of situation, now you also did say if it renders it obscure or invincible. But some of these cars, you can see who is driving, you could see through. And how do you even determine if in advance, the other countries, how they check this is their grades of shades, their facilities to check the gradation of those shades. But we don't have that here. That's done manually, and that will always be subject to controversy. You see, let me, let, me, let me explain something to you. You don't walk outside the law. You must walk within the confines of the law. The law did not specify that we should use anything to measure the, the, the level of thickness of the things. The law itself is very clear. The law says it doesn't matter whether the vehicle is lightly tinted or thickly tinted. And I, 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 the, 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 the truth here is, The major problem we are having is that a whole lot of people, probably including Chamberlain, have a vehicle that has come in with tinted glass. And because of that, they have, they've been caught up on the wrong end of the law, and they just have to kick and kick and kick. But the truth is that that law makes it clear. The law did not say you cannot come in with vehicle with tinted glass permit. The law only says if you come with a vehicle with tinted glass permit, you have... A, 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 a 14 days grace. 14 days grace either to remove the tint or to get a permit. 
And I, it, because, uh, unfortunately, because a whole lot of our friends have been caught on the wrong side of the law, they just feel they could kick and kick and kick. But the truth is this, at, the, at our level as police officers, we will enforce the law. If yeah, Nigerians no. are uncomfortable with the law, they can approach the National Assembly no, what, what and say, oh, this is law is too rigid for us. The police, is in, 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 the, the police officers are enforcing the law too rigidly. We want this law to be amended. That's your business. But for us, this law is very explicit. And again, we must look at the reasons for enforcing this law. We, we, we are not just enforcing this law as a show of power. We are not just enforcing this law because we want to enforce the law. There are fundamental security challenges that have made it imperative for us to enforce the law. I give you these facts, and they are facts that are empirically verifiable. Between December last year and now, we've intercepted about 15 vehicles at different border points, trying to bring in um, um, arms and ammunition into this, into this country. Incidentally, 100% of all those vehicles are tinted vehicles. We have also discovered that over 90% of all the vehicles that have been used in suicide bombing recently, they are all tinted. We've also discovered that the bulk of the vehicles that are used in kidnapping operations and other dangerous crimes taking place in this country, they are all tinted. And well, we have a law that gives us the power to crack down on these things. Let and me jump in again, Frank, uh, just it. a minute, because... And again, we are not saying that you cannot use them. We are only saying you have to get a permit. And if you are qualified to get a permit, you get this permit. If you allow me to come in here, Frank, I think uh, that's uh, another area I, I thought we could also discuss uh, this morning. When you talk about getting a permit uh, to drive around in a tinted glass vehicle, how do you verify the credibility of this personality who has come for this permit. What if, uh, well, a would-be kidnapper or a criminal approaches the police for this permit? How do you know who to give and not to give? What we've done, um, what we've done, Sulai, here is to list out some conditions that you will meet before you are given a permit. If you look at the press release we've done here, we've also itemized those conditions that you are expected to meet before you get a permit. First of all, we expect you to do an application to the Inspector General of Police asking for permission to use tinted glasses on your vehicle. Secondly, we expect you to furnish us with photocopies of all your vehicle's papers. Thirdly, we expect you to send us your passport photograph. Fourthly, we also expect you to send us a, a, a very short a profile of yourself. Your profile is expected to contain some basic information about yourself, including what you do for a living. We also expect you to show us, to send us a picture of the vehicle that you want us to give you permit for. Now, by the time we get all these documents, it's very easy for us to do a very brief background check on you. And once we have these in, in, in our system, once we have these records with us, we'll also be able to track you and trace you if it is important to do so. So we are not just giving permits to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. The problem is that some of the people who are also kicking are people who are, not, who are clearly not qualified to even get a tinted glass permit at an issue. Because the law have actually provided the conditions that you ought to meet before you are given a tinted glass permit. In fact, that's where I wanted to And again, we've also uh, said... Just, just a moment, Frank. That's where I also wanted us to look at. If you look at the motor vehicles prohibition of tinted glass decree, uh, number 6 of 991, you look at uh, section 2, and in this section it says, uh, well, if you have good cause uh, for you to have that, uh, uh, should I say, waiver, which means on health or security reasons. So do you have to conduct any kind of health, uh, should I say, examination, medical examination for anyone that has come for any health reasons? It, 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 is, not, it is not for us to conduct the medical examination. Let me tell you, there are people who, when, when, they, when they submit the application, we expect you to also submit documents that will back up your, your position. 
So, for example, if you, are, if you want a tinted glass permit on health ground, we expect you to submit a medical report that tells us your health condition that makes it imperative for you to stay under a tinted environment. So, for